Welcome back, everyone. It's our last week of waiting for the Lamb of God. I can't wait until the end of this week when we get to celebrate the finishing of God's amazing rescue plan. Of course, he's never done, but part of, the big part of it is over while we wait for the Lamb of God. We get to hear wonderful stories about what God did and what Jesus did when he was here on earth. We've gone through all of these days, and we're now way up to here, almost through with waiting for the Lamb of God. I can't wait for you to see what's on the other side of our banner when we celebrate Easter, that great finish to God's amazing rescue plan. But we have this week to go yet, and we have some great stories to hear from the Bible, all about what happened to Jesus, and even one of the stories that he told that would help to tell us why he came. God is always with us, isn't he? He's with us today in our houses. He's with us in our yards and in our cars and at the grocery store. He's always with us. And we're going to light our candle to help us remember that he is here. And he's in our hearts, isn't he? So he's always with us. No matter where we go, and no matter what we do, God always loves us. Today's story that we're going to hear from the Jesus Storybook Bible is a story called Running Away, and it's going to help us to know just how very much God loves us, and God loves his people, no matter where they are or what they've done. So let's get to our story about running away. I wonder who ran away, and why, and what happened. Jesus told this story about a boy who ran away. Once upon a time, there was a boy and his dad. Now, one day the boy gets to thinking, maybe if I didn't have my dad around telling me what's good for me all the time, I'd be happier. He's spoiling my fun, he thinks. Does my dad really want me to be happy? Does my dad really love me? The son never thought of that before. But suddenly, he doesn't know anymore. Oh, dear. So the son goes to his father and says, Dad, I'm better off without you. I can look after myself. Just give me, your share, give me my share of your money. I don't know. What do you think will happen? His father is sad, but he won't force his boy to stay. So he gives his son what he wants. The son takes the money and goes on a long, long journey to a far off country. Wow. That's kind of sad, isn't it? I wonder what's going to happen. Do you think he'll be happy? Everything's wonderful and perfect for a while. Hmm. He can go wherever he wants, do whatever he wants, be whoever he wants. He's the boss. He is free. Sometimes he gets a strange, hungry, homesick feeling inside his heart. But then he just eats more, or drinks more, or buys more clothes, or goes to more parties until it goes away. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder. Is it going to stay that way? But soon his money runs out. And so do his friends. He ends up getting the only job he can find, feeding pigs. One day he's so hungry and so desperate, he even tries some piggy food. Oh, what am I doing, he says suddenly, as if he's woken up from a nightmare. He spits, yuck, all of the ugh out of his mouth. My father is rich, and here I am, in a pigsty, eating piggy food. He wipes his mouth and dusts himself off. I'm going home. Hmm. What do you think his dad will think? As he starts for home, though, he begins to worry. Dad won't love me anymore. I've been too bad. He won't want me for his son anymore. So he practices his I'm sorry speech. All this time, what he doesn't know 
is that day after day, his dad has been standing on the porch, straining his eyes, looking into the distance, waiting for his son to come home. He just can't stop loving him. He longs for the sound of his boy's voice. He can't be happy until he gets him back. Wow, that's pretty amazing. The sun is still a long way off, but his dad sees him coming. What will the dad do? Fold his arms and frown? Shout, that'll teach you and just you wait, young man. No. That's not how this story goes. The dad leaps off the porch, races down the hill, through the gap in the hedge, up the road. Before his son can even begin his I'm sorry speech, his dad runs to him, throws his arms around him, and can't stop kissing him. How nice, isn't it? And how wonderful that the dad still loved the boy and waited for him and was so excited to see him. Let's have a party, his dad shouts. My boy's home. He ran away. I lost him, but now I have him back. Jesus told them, God is like the dad who couldn't stop loving his boy. And people are like the son who said, does my dad really want me to be happy? Oh, it's like God and us. Jesus told people this story to show them what God is like. He's like the dad who loved his boy. And to show people what they are like. Sometimes we don't love God so much, do we? Sometimes it's easy to say, oh, I want to do it my way. Hmm. So people could know however far they ran, however well they hid, however lost they were, it wouldn't matter because God's children could never run too far or be too lost for God to find them. Wow, isn't that awesome? We're never too far. We're never too lost. God always sees us and he loves us no matter what. He loves us so very much. I want you to know that because the rest of the stories we're going to read this week help us to know just how much God loves us and what he did to save us. So tonight when you say your prayers, give your mom or dad or grandma and grandpa a big hug and send God a big hug too and thank him for all he's done. We'll see you tomorrow.